Hi guys, Sierra Chana Ranade here and I welcome you all to my next session, the Saturday lecture series and today's topic is mutual funds. In this video, let's quickly understand what are we going to learn. Number one, we are going to talk about what is a mutual fund, its basics and how it works. Number two, we are going to learn what are the different types of mutual funds. Number three, I'm going to tell you about a very specific type of mutual fund, which is a comparatively less known or I may say less explored type of mutual fund. And the last and the bonus tip from my side is what are the things that you should check out before investing in any mutual fund. This video is brought to you by Easy Plan. Easy Plan is an app that helps you save money regularly from your phone where you can earn a higher return than your regular savings account. And these returns can also go close to your returns on FDs and that too without any lock in period. Uh, Easy Plan helps you to invest in low risk liquid mutual funds. But do you know what's a liquid mutual fund? No. And watch this video till the end so that you can get an amazing idea about exactly what is a liquid fund and how it works. Okay, so let me just quickly tell you what is a mutual fund and how it works. Okay, to put it in a very simple way, uh, let's take it a, a very simple example on this. Uh, assume that I were to go from Pune to Mumbai. I have two options. Assume I can take out my own car. I can ride on my own. I can drive on my own. I can enjoy because I know how to drive. <clears throat> I know uh, what way I have to choose. I know what are the basic rules, everything. Okay, so I'm a well-educated person as far as driving is concerned. So I can choose how to drive, which way to go and how to go about it. Possibility number two, I'm not really keen on driving. I just want to reach Mumbai. That's it. So what I can do is uh, I can just hire a driver. I hire a professional in short. He takes the decision on which road to choose, at what speed to drive, where to stop. I keep all the decisions at his discretion. I've just told him the final destination. Okay, that's exactly the difference between a stock market investment and a mutual fund investment. In stock market investment, you take your own decisions. You know where you have to go, how to go. You have expertise in that. And you have the uh, enthusiasm, I may say, to explore these things. But if you are of the second category, you're really not bothered to explore things. You better hire a professional and he will take decisions for you. That's exactly what a mutual fund does. So in simple words, mutual fund, mein, there is a mutual fund manager who takes decisions on your own money, which is invested with the mutual fund. Okay. So let's understand basically what a mutual fund does. Okay. It will collect money from people like you and me. Okay. So assume that there is a, there is a pool of hundred people. Okay. And these hundred people given funds or uh, contribute some money to a mutual fund. Now this mutual fund is going to reinvest this money into different, different investment opportunities. Like a mutual fund can invest in equity. A mutual fund can invest in debt. A mutual fund can invest in either or or both. Okay. So that depends on the objective of the mutual fund scheme. Okay. So putting it in a very short, uh, you know, nutshell, I may say mutual fund is nothing but a type of organization which would take money from people like you and me would create a pool of funds and this pool of funds will be invested in different, different investments. Okay. Now, what is the positive side for the mutual fund now? Mutual fund, which has invested in different, different avenues, investment avenues, mutual fund will earn income out of that. Okay. Now this income earned can be in the form of interest or it can be in the form of dividend. Okay. It could be in the form of gain as well. Difference between cost price and selling price, right? So mutual fund ko kya hua? They got gains. Okay. Assume they got 100 rupee gains. Then what mutual fund is going to do with that? Distribute this to the investors. Those who had invested in the mutual fund. Do you think they're going to distribute entire 100 rupees? If they distribute entire 100 rupees, are they mad just to do social service? No, they're not going to do that. So they are going to take out some portion for their own purpose. This is exactly known as management expenses or people call this as an expense ratio. This expense ratio could be typically 1% to 3% of your total investment amount. Okay. I hope you have understood how a mutual fund works in the most simplified manner. Let's move on to the types of mutual funds. Originally, what used to happen? I'll tell you every mutual fund company. I'm sure you might have heard about all these ICICI mutual fund or HDFC mutual fund, or you might have uh, heard about Birla Sun like mutual fund. So many mutual funds are there in the market. Every mutual fund used to come up with a different type of mutual fund. And they used to say, now invest in this one. Now invest in that one. Poor investor. He used to get confused as to exactly where I should invest and where I should not. So what SEBI did, SEBI said, you can have now only five types of mutual funds. Okay. Which are the five types? Number one, we have an equity mutual fund. Okay. So let's understand what's an equity mutual fund. Like I explained right now, 
म्यूचुअल फंड द म्यूचुअल फंड इंस्टीट्यूशन बेसिकली इज गोइंग टू कलेक्ट मनी फ्रॉम पीपल लाइक यू एंड मी एंड दिस कलेक्टेड मनी विल देन बी इन्वेस्टेड इन इक्विटी विल देन बी इन्वेस्टेड इन स्टॉक मार्केट दिस विल बी एन इक्विटी ओरिएंटेड म्यूचुअल फंड और एन इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड सेकंड वन इज अ डेट फंड वट वट विल हैपन विद अ डेट फंड अगेन सेम फर्स्ट स्टेप रिमेन सेम दैट म्यूचुअल फंड इज गोइंग टू कलेक्ट मनी फ्रॉम पीपल लाइक यू एंड मी बट इंस्टेड ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग इन इक्विटी नाउ इट विल इन्वेस्ट इन डेट ओके प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड इन डेट द रिस्क इज डेफिनेटली ऑन अ लोअर साइड बिकॉज देर आर देर इज देर इज नथिंग टू डू विद द स्टॉक मार्केट फ्लक्चुएशन दिस मनी फ्रॉम अ डेट फिन डेट फंड नेवर गेट्स इन्वेस्टेड इन अ स्टॉक मार्केट राइट थर्ड वन is known as a hybrid fund okay hybrid fund i hope you have understood the, by the name itself it could be a little bit of equity could be a little bit of debt fourth one is basically a solution oriented fund solution oriented fund could be like a, a child marriage fund uh, child marriage matlab waisa wala nahi hai aapka child jab marriageable age ka hoga wo wala child marriage fund okay second one could be it could be your child education fund okay so basically it's a solution oriented you you have Uh, a solution you, you basically want a solution after some specific time frame for which you invest and whenever the time comes you are going to take out money from that fund right fourth uh, type was a solution fund solution solution oriented fund and the last one is like an other mutual fund the fifth one is like other fund uh, the best example of an other fund is an index fund okay so basically in index fund uh, whatever money this mutual fund house is collecting it's directly invested in the fund uh, it's directly invested in the index basically so they are going to invest directly in your nifty they are going to invest directly in sensex something like that i hope you have understood the basic types of funds so moving on uh, today we are going to focus only on one type or in that type also i'm going to talk about a specific sub type which is comparatively less explored by people like you and me i'm sure everyone looks at mutual funds only from one angle that is i would like to earn more but i don't want as much risk as is involved in stock market so majority of you i'm sure might be going ahead with equity oriented mutual funds but guys is that the only option available for mutual fund answer is no so today what we are going to talk about is debt fund and in debt fund specifically i'm going to talk about a fund which is known as a liquid fund okay now what's a liquid fund liquid funds are a type of mutual fund that invest in securities with a residual maturity of up to 91 days assets invested are not tied up for a long time as liquid funds do not have a lock in period i'm going to talk about various uh, perspectives of a liquid fund number 1 uh, for whom liquid fund is useful okay generally people like me poor people like me uh, why poor i don't earn any salary guys seriously i don't earn even 1 rupee of salary okay but whatever income i get is business income or professional income so what happens with me let us understand maybe 10 days 15 days i might not even earn 1 rupee but on the 16th day i might earn uh, x amount of money okay now the question is oh my god i have got that sweet message from bank that your account has been credited with whatever rupees okay but then i don't know what i'm going to do with this money okay just as an example assume that on a single day i got 40000 rupees okay but i'm not sure what i'm going to do with this 40000 rupees but do i really keep this money in savings account that is one alternative right but in this i'm going to get only 4% return instead of that what i may think of is let me park these funds temporarily in a liquid fund okay now what a liquid fund does is that it is a type of mutual fund which will park your money only for a short time short time matlab kitna short it could be even like one day and it could be on a higher side okay it should not be beyond 91 days okay so in simple words for whom liquid funds can be important it could be for those people who get money uh, they have some investable surplus but they are not sure when to invest or where to invest they just need some time to think on where to invest for them i feel liquid fund can be the best possible solution second if you talk about the returns on uh, these liquid mutual funds typically whatever types of uh, or whatever different schemes i just checked it could be the icici uh, prudential scheme or other schemes as well i found out that typically okay majority of the cases you earn a potential return of up to 7% it's way too higher than your saving bank account and it is also beating your fixed deposit uh, returns okay so i feel it's a amazing investment opportunity uh, i might not say that the returns are like sky high but definitely they are definitely higher than your savings account as well as your majority of fds if i go on to the next point is uh, liquidity so let's assume that i had invested in this liquid fund and uh, i need funds now i after let us say almost 7 days now i'm sure okay i need to invest my 40000 in this specific area do i immediately get my money or no answer is yes 
so typically whenever i sell these liquid mutual funds okay i would get my money immediately okay so i did talk about returns i did talk about liquidity number 3 is are they safe will it eat up into my investments okay so that is what i wanted to talk about certain precautions that you have to take before you invest but that i'm going to cover in the last segment of this video only but one more important aspect which you should understand because it's directly linked with one point which is your returns return to mila maza to aaya hmm but next is what taxability there, there there is someone who is actually looking out oh you have earned money and who is that government of india okay they are going to say rachna paisa kamaya pay tax okay so what tax will be uh, levied on my gains on liquid fund is a very important point so please understand this there could be a long term capital gain or there could be a short term capital gain if it's a short term capital gain what is a short term capital gain i invested in a liquid fund and uh, i have uh, sold it within a span of 3 years okay so i told you that one year ka criteria hota hai but one year criteria is basically for the instruments in which i'm investing okay so if i buy into a mutual fund liquid mutual fund and i have sold it let us say within 8 months as an example okay i have sold it within 8 months then uh, assume that i got 10000 rupees as a return from this okay now this 10000 will be taxed as per my tax lab okay so if you think that my income is up to 250000 that i won't have to pay any tax on that if you feel that my income is up to 5 lakh then i will have to just pay 5% of this gain if you feel that my tax lab is somewhere between 5 lakh to 10 lakh i'll have to pay 20% tax on that and just in case if you feel that my income exceeds 10 lakhs then i will have to pay 30% on this same amount okay so that's for what that's for a short term capital gain on a liquid fund If it's a long-term capital gain on a, a liquid fund, then the taxation is flat at the rate of twenty percent. But there is a concept of indexation also involved. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. I might cover it up in a separate video. Okay. I hope taxation perspective is also understood. Let's move on to the last segment, which is the precautions to be taken and some bonus tips from my side as to at least two to three points which you should consider before investing in any liquid fund. Number one. check what is the entry load or the exit load okay see guys entry load is generally going to be zero exit load would also be zero for majority of the cases but in some funds which which i was checking on the internet there is an exit load if you exit the scheme within 7 days of investing okay so if you are investing today and let us say you uh, sell the units within 2 to 3 days you might be charged with an exit load so just check whether the exit load is there for the scheme or does not prevail for the scheme number 2 also check what is the lock in period see generally there is no lock in lock in period for any liquid fund okay at least whatever research i did there was no lock in period for any scheme but that should be a basic precaution that you should check before investing in any fund and the last point very very important i am investing in a liquid fund does this mean that there is zero risk as i mentioned is a very important point guys please understand this point okay is there a zero risk involved in liquid fund answer is no there is a risk for sure see the moment you are getting a little bit more return as compared to saving a little bit more return as compared to fd there is a thumb rule of finance high risk high returns the moment you are getting higher returns it means that you are exposed to some sort of risk now what could be that some sort of risk you might say but madam it's a debt fund so there's no stock market risk i agree there is no stock market risk question is that where do this in which instruments do these mutual funds invest okay so going back to our first point people like you and me invested in this mutual fund now the question is where do this where does this pool of money go into this pool of money can be going into something known as certificate of deposits it could be going into commercial papers it could be going into government bonds into treasury bills okay i'm sure all these are alien names for you but if i start explaining each and every concept the video will go like one hour something something so again i'll discuss this separately in a different video okay so these are different different names of debt instruments as of now okay now what could happen i'll give you a simple example of one of the debt instruments here one of the debt instruments i talked about is a commercial paper okay let me repeat it's a debt instrument d e b t it's not a debt instrument okay right oh, i know it was a bad joke okay anyways so debt instrument commercial paper uh it's a kind of an unsecured instrument what does it mean tomorrow if some company who had issued this commercial paper and that is a commercial paper in which this mutual fund is investing that company goes bankrupt example yes we do have an example our favorite ilfs okay ilfs had come up with a commercial paper there were many mutual fund liquid funds who had invested in commercial papers of ilfs ilfs doob gaya 
okay what will happen is there a risk for this liquid fund yes there is a risk so ensure that not a big chunk of your liquid fund goes into a specific category like a commercial paper and worst scenario could be like it, it is going into a commercial paper but only of one or two companies okay so ensure that the portfolio of this mutual fund liquid scheme is well diversified into different different types of instruments and also in different different companies which are uh, you know issuing these type of instruments okay so guys to sum up liquid funds are not risk free but they are definitely low risk category of mutual funds the question is where will i find out the portfolio of uh, all these typical liquid fund schemes we do have a free website moneycontrol.com and you will find the portfolio of each and every liquid fund in uh, that specific moneycontrol.com so be sure that you check out the portfolio and then only invest in liquid funds okay so i hope you have got a very very holistic approach about what is a liquid fund what are the different types of funds meanings and i hope you have gotten a good confidence about when you should invest in liquid funds and now that you have understood a lot about liquid funds let us now understand how to invest in liquid funds in the most simplistic manner through the easy plan app okay so let's uh log into our easy plan app and uh, just for your understanding it's an app through which uh, your funds get saved in icici prudential liquid mutual funds uh, easy bot says what's your name i'll just quickly introduce myself uh okay wow so it says that uh, it it's helping me to set a savings goal first okay so i feel this is very important your first step towards financial success is setting up a goal that's what we are doing right now let's say i want to save for a vacation why not or an emergency fund first first i i feel emergency fund is more important so let's set up for that how much do you spend approximately every month so let us say i spend 20000 per month okay um so obviously for 3 months i would be spending 60000 for 6 months 120000 but i feel that 3 months emergency fund should be good enough for me so let me give this as a target for my uh, savings do you want to save every week or every month i am not a salaried person so i won't get a uh, monthly income i can also enjoy a weekly income okay so let me choose weekly but anyways i have i had an option to do that uh okay it's giving me suggestions how much do i want to save 5% of my income 10% of my income or 15% i feel 10% of my income should be good enough to save okay uh wow it says that emergency fund will be ready in 23 months uh, good part i liked about it is number one it helped me to uh, set a goal and number two it helped me to even uh, you know uh, tell me in within how much time frame i'll be able to achieve that goal okay so i'm saying save a goal um great job setting a goal here's a surprise present okay let me just scratch it wow i've got a 200 rupees uh, bonus for setting my first goal uh, so a very important uh, aspect of easy plan is that uh, you can uh, invest in multiples uh, let's say if i start with a multiple of only 100 rupee uh, it's not necessary that i need to uh, you know regularly invest 100 100 100 rupees let's say in the first month i give a target of 100 next month i'm not able to invest 100 uh, it's absolutely fine if i skip a, a specific month i can in, even invest 5 rupees in a specific month so uh, that's a very amazing point and i feel that one more important point is that uh, there are no penalty charges uh, for skipping any installment uh, and with this still you can reach your goals and uh, you can earn a little bit better than your saving and almost close to your fd returns so if you want to invest uh, using easy plan app please check the link which is given in the description box the link contains uh, separate links for ios users and android users i hope you have understood today's discussion very well that's it from my side jai hind bye bye